On today's Locked On Texas podcast, we look at a mock draft, a very interesting mock draft. We also dive into the YouTube comments. It's been a while, but our friend of the show, Big Sarge, Brian Bearfield, the Texan Warrior, joins the show. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Wednesday episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm John Hickman, joined by Cody Davis. We are going to be joined by Brian Baffey, a big stars, like I mentioned, from the Texan Wire, friend of the show and a friend of off the show as well. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the few guys, man, when we look at the Houston Texans media <laughs> called, foreshadowed, just saw a lot of this. Uh, the, what's taking place right now, I saw a lot of it happening before it took place, but, you know, that's going to be a very interesting conversation, and I'm pretty sure he's going to come on here smiling with the I told you so look. But, you know, we had a very interesting tweet. Uh, Cody, myself, uh, the guy included the Houston Texans, which, by the way, guys, if you mention the professional team on Twitter – they're not going to necessarily see it. It's <laughs> the social media intern who's trying to work his way in the door or whoever the social media manager is. But uh, Joe Lee, at Follow the Dreads on Twitter, tweeted us a mock draft. And in this mock draft, Bryce Young went number one overall. Mm -hmm. Jalen Carter hmm. at number 11. Jameer Gibbs at number 32. The running back out of Alabama, Lucas Van Ness, the edge out of Iowa, Cameron Latu out of Alabama, and with the over 100th overall pick, I can't pronounce his name, but a guard from Wake Forest. Um, then he also goes to Davion, the Tavion Wicks, Noah Daniels, Rashad Torrance, Christian Mahanagy, uh, and then I can't see the last guy, but. You know, Jalen Carter, you know, Bryce Young, Jalen Carter, Jameer Gibbs, and the first three picks, that is entirely too good to be true. <laughs> uh, I thought it was great to talk about it, and I wouldn't take Jameer Gibbs. I wouldn't take a running back in the first round unless it's just uh, B. John Robinson, and I don't think the Houston Texans will do that. The number 32 overall pick, that's a perfect opportunity for Houston to snag a wide receiver. But Bryce Young, Cody, Jalen Carter, Jameer Gibbs, Lucas Van Ness, how do you feel about that? Um, I'm not going to say I love this draft, but I do believe it's very interesting. Um, first and foremost, he did have an opportunity um uh, to draft 13 players and look, this is a mock draft. So of course, you know, you just having just, fun. Yeah, just having fun, but having you fun. know, just foreshadowing, you know, what the Houston Texans could possibly do in next year's NFL draft 13 picks, you know, so damn well, Nick Casario is probably going to trade four or five of those picks like he did last year. Um, of course, love the pick of Bryce Young. Um, Jalen Carter at number 11. John, you could probably attest to this more than I can, but he I do not it. see how I'm about to say, you know, I don't know. Like, put it like this. If the Houston Texans can get Bryce Young, and Jalen Carter within the first round, that will be the ultimate dream dream scenario where you can say, going back to a conversation that you and I had on yesterday, look, you embrace the tank and it worked. whoop de doo But unless Nick Casario could use that, that, that second first round pick that he has from the Cleveland Brown, which is right now, what, number eight or number nine, was probably going to be number 11 or 12, following the results of Sunday's game, but there is no way in hell, unless Nick Casario could trade back up into the top five, maybe top six, there is no way in hell you're going to have an opportunity to draft Jalen Carter with that second first round pick. Um, Unless you just pay a, a hefty price, John, you will be proud of me. And this is due to the development and the emergence of Damian Pierce. I will not take a running back within the first oh, wow. three rounds. That's funny. <laughs> and that's funny because ever since John and I been covering the Houston Texans, which is going on about our third, fourth season, uh, me and him has had a lot of arguments on camera, off camera, about whether or not it makes sense for the Houston Texans to draft a running back. But, you know, like I mentioned, due to the emergence of Damian Pierce, I will not 
mind if the Houston Texans just don't address don't address the running back situation at all in the draft. Yes, we know they need a number two running back. Wait, wait. wait. Yes, I understand that they they need a number two running back, and I want them to get that number two running back. But I do believe Benjamin has an opportunity to take to him as his team's um, number two running back. Hopefully, he gets an opportunity to do so on Sunday. But if they do or when they address the running back situation, I will prefer <clears throat> them to do so in free agency. But overall, I do believe our guy put together a really good draft. Yeah, absolutely, man. Again, like you mentioned, it's a mock draft. And- yeah. You know, getting Bryce Young against Jalen Carter as perfect as that sounds. <laughs> we live in reality. Uh, my man. man Jarvis Price on YouTube to kind of go over to the YouTube comments really quick. Uh, he said Jalen Carter at number one, Anthony Richardson at number 10. I don't think Anthony Richardson is coming out this year, nor do I think he should. I think mm. those who are close to him should really advise him to stay another year. Uh, there's been talks about him possibly, or rumors mm. and, you know, whatever. Uh, possibly entering the transfer portal. I think Florida needs to do a very good job, a better job of creating an offense around him. Uh, but even still, if he was coming out, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. And I don't really believe in Anthony Richardson as of right now. Uh, didn't make a lot of these the throws that you want to see a quarterback in college coming out and make um, and had issues with reads. And so uh, he, he isn't pure athlete. And I get that. And I think he may have not been able to showcase what he fully can do throughout the entirety of the year because of the offensive struggles. But I wouldn't take him at number 10. And I honestly, I wouldn't draft Anthony Richardson if I'm the Houston Texans. Man, Juan Rojas. Rojas. My child wrote it R. Fire everyone and get a whole new regime, even GM. <laughs> and he called him casserole. <laughs> <laughs> he called him casserole. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not I'm not faking this laugh. This is the first time I, I'm just going through random comments <laughs> and he called him casserole. Uh I I think that's hilarious, man. We got big stars coming up, man. That's gonna be fun. Stick around. I don't know how many hot takes he's gonna give y'all, but at the rate he's been on, you may want to listen up because he may know a little something for you. Guys, also want to let you guys know about Turo. They are the world's largest car sharing marketplace. And with Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, whenever you want it, from a community of local hosts across the United States, the UK, Canada, and Australia. So forget about boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com today. And also, this episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we are sure you're going to love, just like you love the Locked On Texans podcast. Find the Block Forever now, wherever you get your podcast. Block Forever is a brand new podcast from former NFL All-Pro Ryan Khalil and Audible. Khalil does a very good job of taking the conversation about football to the next level. He gives football fans and insiders an inside look at the game through the eyes of the greatest players and personalities of all time. It's available for free on Audible or wherever you get your podcast. So catch the full block, the full block forever series, excuse me, available anywhere you get your podcast, available everywhere now. Audible, let's get in the game. Welcome back in, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers out there. As promised, (laughs) Negro Domus, Notre (laughs) Domus, the hot take king himself. Brian Barfield, Big Sarge, a part of the Texan Wire, and of course, Big Sarge Media joining the show. And before we get started, just something on my mind. You guys don't got to answer it now, but put it in the comments, of course. Top five love songs of all time. Now let's talk about the Houston Texans, because that's what we're here to do. That was random. But Sarge, what's going on, man? And welcome back to Locked On Texans. (laughs) Hey, look, that that surely was. And Spend My Life With You by Eric Benet. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's okay, a cool, cool, cool. Cody, that's that's a cool. That's a cool. Cody you got one? You got one? <laughs> Cody, what's, what's your – we can't do top five, but what's your, no, what's your go-to love song? Michael Jackson, Lady of My Life, number yeah. nine on Thriller, 40th yeah. anniversary. I mean, come on, now. Why yeah. would you even ask me that? You should already know. But, Sarge, man, Houston Texans, one, nine, and one, we know about the big game that's taking place on Sunday. But before we jump into it, man, ladies and gentlemen, 
let's take a moment let's to go, go back, back in time, time to September first, two thousand. Go back in twenty two. I get Davis Mills is still a young quarterback learning, but he did not take enough risk, or he did not show me enough in practice when the cameras were off, when nothing, when he was just supposed to be running plays. Why are you doing vanilla check down plays in practice? With everything that we are, we have been seeing. And this time next week, we'll be gearing up for week one of the 20, 2022 campaign. How has your, if any, how has your projection changed for the Houston Texans entering this new season? Let me go ahead and preface my statement by saying this. Man, I'm about to get cooked on YouTube. But guess what? You know, if anybody don't care, Sarge don't care. If Kyle Allen was starting, I would say the Texans would win eight games. Yeah, you about to get cooked. <laughs> I'm not going to say Kyle Allen would have led the Houston Texans to eight games, but Sarge called it once again. That episode of Locked On Texans took <clears throat> place on September 1st, 2022. And almost three months later, we are here. Kyle Allen is the starting quarterback for the Houston Texans. Sarge, <laughs> what did you think of Kyle Allen's performance on Sunday? And not only that, how does it feel to be the person who has been calling for Kyle Allen to start since before the season started? Take the floor. <laughs> Let me go on record by saying this. Thank you all for having me on the show. Second of all, uh, Cody, that intro made me shed a thug tear. <laughs> Really, just one like like one thug tear. Like I, I wow, wow, that that was amazing, Cody. Like, I look, all is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I'm gonna go with Kyle Allen's performance on last week first. Let, let me address that first. It was what I expected from a guy who hadn't thrown a pass in almost a year in a competitive game. Cody, he has thrown, before last week, he had only thrown 19 passes, 19 passes since 2021. Two games against Dallas last year. He went four for nine, and I think he, he went four for nine and then eight for ten or something like that against the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys last year. 19 passes since 12-26-2021. Hmm. What I expected from him is exactly what I got from him. A guy that came into the game rusty, hadn't played any competitive football, in, like I said, in nearly a year, hadn't really taken any first-team snaps. You cannot throw a quarterback out there and tell him, okay, here you go, play with these other 10 guys that you haven't been playing with for the entire year. For 13 weeks, you have not been playing with these guys. Here you go. We know you've been running scout team. We know what you can do against the first team defense. We don't know what you can do, or you, you have you don't know the characteristics or the habits of a Brandon Cooks, a Nico Collins, a OJ Howard, um, uh, what's our guy's name? Jordan Akins. <laughs> you don't know, you don't know, you know, <clears throat> he barely even knows how to call the, the protections the, the audible out of or, or call the line protection because Question Bear is not gonna do it. That's another story for another time. But you have this guy that comes in and doesn't and hasn't been playing in so long. I, I expected exactly what I got. And anyway, exactly what I got is what I've been seeing when the team, because now they're one nine and one. I got exactly what I've been seeing when the team was one eight and one. Guy came in, Rusty, at the end of the game, garbage time minutes, he looked better. As time went on, he looked better. And I understand he did not have a lot of protection. <clears throat> He did not. He he did not have a lot of protection. Sometimes I don't know if 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 the fans picked up on this or not, and maybe you all did as well. He sometimes it almost looked like he didn't know what was going on. And what I mean by not knowing what was going on, it almost seemed like there was a play that was called and it didn't register him, register to him really quick. That falls back on Pep Hamilton and Lovey Smith because if you have a guy that you know that you're going to start, you should not. Have him splitting reps with someone else. 
that was my, my next question for you, man. How irresponsible was it from this coaching staff, knowing that this decision was going to be made the Friday before the game, to have him split reps when he was going to be the starter for Sunday? I thought that was very irresponsible and uh, I, I, unprofessional as well. So the reason why I blame Lovey Smith and I blame Pep Hamilton is because even the hint of him starting – and knowing that he could start, Davis Mills already knows what he needs to do. You just let this guy take the first team reps anyway. And if he does not start, then Davis Mills can step right in. He already knows the plays. He already knows what to do. And you go from there. But I blame Lovey Smith and Pep Hamilton because you should have had that guy more prepared. Now, the ultimate blame falls mm -hmm. on Nick Casario because I feel like he did not let Lovey Smith know in time that this is who we we're going to start. Yes, there was there there was rumors and and there was you know uh, reports out there that Kyle Allen would start, but until Nick Casario makes that final decision, you left both of your coaches in limbo. You why left. Is, why is that a Nick job? Why is that not on the coaches? I mean, that's just this. Why is that? Why would why would the general manager have to make that decision when it's in plain sight? This is what you hire coaches to do. The quarterback's been that bad. You need to change. Why, why are we waiting on Nick to, you know, make that call? John, you know anybody. And I picked up the sarcastic tone in your voice. I definitely picked up that sarcastic Why are we waiting for Nick? Because we know that Nick runs everything. Now, I'll put it like this. I just told someone today when I was having this discussion about that. Feels left. I, I feel, I feel, Big Sarge feels. If it was left up to Lovey Smith, Davis Mills would have been pulled three weeks ago. If it was left up to Lovey Smith, Davis Mills probably would have been pulled after game five. Because here you have a coach, a coach that has went to the Super Bowl with a less than talented quarterback, but still made it there. You have a coach who has been in this game, who has coached this game on the professional <clears throat> level and the college level. You have a coach who's been around this league long enough to know and to recognize when a quarterback has it and when a quarterback does not have it, when a player has it and when a player does not have it. And I feel that Lovey Smith probably looked at Davis Mills and no matter what he told us from week to week, no matter what he told us, feeding us that false narrative about how much confidence he had in Davis Mills. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I think Cody has asked him on more than one occasion about sure the confidence. Did that they have in Davis Mills. And he's lied to us <laughs> every time to our faces. But he had to lie because at the end of the day, he knew that he could not make that call. No matter what he wanted to do, he could not make that call. It looks exactly like who? David Cully last year, oh. this time. <laughs> David Cully last year, this time, who whose emotions, whose demeanor, whose facial expression, whose tone was the exact same way that Lovey Smith is right now. And at the end of the day, the common denominator falls back on who? Your general manager, Nick Casario. Now, real quick, going, you asked me, Cody, about going forward. Do I think that he should start? Mm -hmm. Right? What do they have? Uh, Six games left, I believe. Well, I'm um, yes. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to say... Yes, he should. And the reason why he should is if you're going into, you know, full-blown tank mode, embrace the tank, right, John? <laughs> like John say, <laughs> embrace it. Embrace it. <laughs> if you're going to embrace the tank and you're going to push towards this draft pick, then you might as well go ahead and leave him in there. And the reason why I say that is because you've already, you've already set in motion that you're actively tanking because Kyle Allen started last week against the Miami Dolphins. He's going to start this week against the Cleveland Browns. He's probably going to start against the Dallas Cowboys, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Tennessee Titans. Four out of those five teams are going to go to the playoffs. Four out of five of them will be playing in the postseason. So now all you did was appease some of your fans out there that wanted Davis Mills pulled from the game. And you say, oh, I know when to do it. I know when to do it exactly when it's time for the hardest part of our schedule. There's no quarterback on there's no quarterback on the Texans roster that's going to win these games. So pulling Davis Mills for ineffectiveness which you should have did weeks ago 
is only telling fans, oh, okay, we're trying to do something. We're making a change. But I still see, or, or I'm sorry, I still have to <laughs> embrace the take. I'm going to keep <laughs> like this, That was embrace good. It. Embrace the take. You got to embrace it, man. Sarge, really quick before moving on, um, I know you're not going to spend too much time on this because, you know, you never was a believer in Davis Mills. Um, mm -hmm. But do you feel that there is, at least on your end, somewhat of a disappointment that Davis Mills did not pan out? Because, I mean, we talked about this on camera, off camera. You know, the, the best part about having Davis Mills at least showcase that he can be a, at least a quality quarterback that was going to give this organization more time to fill all the other holes like improving a defensive line, you know, boosting up the secondary even more, you know, getting more playmakers. Now you're looking at a situation where they're going to have to utilize one of their most valuable draft picks on a, on, on, on a quarterback. Cody, let me tell you something. Let, let me ask both of you all something. Do you all remember where you were September 11th, 2016? I want to, and the reason why I brought that date up is, I'm going to tell you what happened on, on, on September the 11th, 2016. Was that Brock Osweiler? The Houston Texans played the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Brock remember Osweiler that. had 231 yards passing, two touchdowns, and one interception. One interception. I remember that. You know what You know what? the airwaves lit up with? Brock Osweiler is the next, right? Oh, Brock Osweiler is. Brock Osweiler is going to be this. Brock Osweiler is going to be that. Oh, my God. I've watched him do this, that, another. Brock, Brock Osweiler is the next coming of insert great quarterback there. And I said to myself, what the hell y'all looking at? Because what I'm seeing, I'm definitely, even with this, this game, right? Even with that game. So then fast forward by week 15 in Jacksonville, they pulled him for Tom Savage. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hold on. It gets better. He got benched the next week against the tie. I mean, he got benched the next week against the Cincinnati uh, Bengals, right? You remember Tom Savage went into concussion protocol, but he came back. Tom Savage went into concussion protocol, excuse me. And then guess what? Brock Osweiler had to play against this team called the Tennessee Titans, right? He went 21 for 40, 253 yards, one touchdown, and they lost 24 to 17. So now, at the end of the season, going into the playoffs, you lose to the Titans, but you barely lose to the Titans, and then all of a sudden, what happens? Oh, man, we can't wait for next year. Sound familiar? <laughs> Kind of right, just just a little. Shout bit. out to my boy Drew. <laughs> Sound just for me, you're right, just a little bit. So here we go. Fast forward, right? Fast forward. When I looked at Davis Mills, the first time, the first week I saw Davis Mills, I said, <clears throat> "Oh yeah, oh this 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 Brock Osweiler 2.0." I when I first I said, "Okay, but he's a rookie. Let me give him a chance." So then I watched him go through OTAs. Then I watched him go through. Uh, uh, I watched him go through OTAs, mini rookie camp, and then I watched him through training camp. And I said to myself, like he do realize that the players that are on his team are wearing <laughs> blue, and the defense is wearing white. Why does he keep throwing to the players in the white? Right. So okay, yeah. cool. I don't evaluate quarterbacks really until after year three. All right, I'm gonna give him a chance. Fast forward again into this year, what happens? Looking at him, and I'm saying to myself, ain't nothing changed. If anything, and I've said this. It got since, worse. But, but, but he actually took more risk because I was standing next, next to you. He actually took more risk as a rookie quarterback doing training camp than he did this year. That's I do want to give you credit with that. that. I was just about to say that, Cody. He regressed. And at first I'm saying, well, maybe it's because, maybe it's because he's playing with Maybe it's because he has a, a brand new offensive coordinator. And so maybe Pep is trying to teach him how to check down, check down. And then Kyle Allen come in the game and he's like, man, F a check down, I'm going to go deep. <laughs> he was swinging, <laughs> swinging that thing deep. So to make a long story even longer, what happened, Cody? You remember what happened? After the 2016 season, Brock Osweiler was traded to the Cleveland Browns. Before he could even start one game, what happened? They released him for Deshaun Kaiser. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where he is right now. If I'm, he's doing if a I'm, podcast. He's, he's, he's huh? just on a podcast. Actually, Deshaun Kaiser was just on the podcast talking about some crazy stories with Aaron Rodgers. So I, I think he's in the podcasting game right now. 
I thought he was at work for the Geek Squad at Best Buy. So <laughs> then <laughs> what happened after that? He got picked up. He got released by the Browns, picked up by the Denver Broncos, and the rest is history. The greatest highway robbery of money outside of uh, Kelvin Cato. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to find the best qualified candidates available. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Super easy. Add your job to LinkedIn and also include the purple hiring hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're looking for people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to Faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I don't like a lot of change. And um, you know, growing up sticking with Gainesville, that's all I knew. Clemson committed as a 14-year-old, the Dabo Sweeney, that's what I am. I'm committed to the Houston Texans, the NFL. Coach OB, Jack, all my teammates, I'm committed here. I don't like a lot of change. So once I, you know, was drafted here, I, you know, set myself that I want to be, I want to be Houston as my, my, my next home. Like Houston is my foundation, is my home. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Man, when I tell you nothing about that press conference, has aged well. For those of you guys who don't know, you probably know it, Sarge. I remember you was on the Zoom along with John and myself. That was the day the Houston Texans extended the Sean Watson, gave him that big contract. Um, it was one of the best days in franchise history. And on Sunday, the Sean Watson will be making his return to NRG Stadium, but as an opponent, we're not about to go down the long list of <clears throat> drama and shenanigans that has taken place since he signed that contract extension for Sarge. With Deshaun Watson coming to Houston, I have to ask you, how would you best remember the Deshaun Watson era? Well, first of all, uh, John, you're pretty petty with what you just did. I call Oh, yeah, very, very petty. Second of all, give me one second. Hold on. I'm consulting with my legal team, Lil Sarge. He wants me to make sure that everything I say, as far as concerning the 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 criminal aspect of it, that I say use allegedly. I have to make sure that I use allegedly. So, I mean, Lil Sarge was just reminded Big Sarge on that. The, the Deshaun Watson. I'm not gonna even lie to you. I didn't, and you know, people are probably gonna comment on this and and, <laughs> and cook me, but. I don't care, man. I love the Deshaun Watson era here for the Houston Texans. I loved watching that young man play football. That young man is very talented. He knows the game. He plays the game. He plays the game with a lot of heart. He plays the game to win the game. So I, I, I listen. I loved the Deshaun Watson era. Watching him play, you know, there, there. I put it like this. I, I remember the first game, 20, 2019, twenty nineteen, twenty twenty. Well, no, when did they play? No, I'm saying, when did they play the Saints to open up the season? 2019. 2019. I was there 2019. at that game. Watch. Phenomenal game. Oh, we got Watch. the dub, too. Yeah. We got oh. the dub, too. Who's we? The New Orleans Saints. Oh, that team that didn't score last week. Hey, so look, I was, I, I, was there that, I was there at that game, and I watched that young man come out and impose his will on the New Orleans Saints. Now, eventually they lost the game, of course, but Throughout that game, I said, this young man has stepped on this field to, to win the game. Now, that was that. And, and like I said, I, I remember that distinctly. I also remember the first time he took a snap after Tom Savage had, <laughs> had been sacked <laughs> six times. <laughs> sacked six times in one half. And as they went to halftime, I turned to Max Edison, God rest his soul, and I said, hey, the Deshaun Watson era is about to begin, even though – uh, Bill O'Brien doesn't want it to begin just yet. It has to begin because it, it was that the game that Tom Savage got hit 
and he yeah, was he, he bought throws. And then, like that, was like they cannot run it back in there. And ever since then, man, that everything just just took off from there. I would have loved to seen him be more successful mm-hmm. while he was here. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I I'm excited. I'm excited to see Deshaun Watson come back. I have not seen him play in person since 2019. 2020. No, 2020 was the COVID season. But that was his last year here because 2021, which was last year, that was the year he was sitting on and stuff. Because 2020 was the year because Mm -hmm, because that was their first year they went four and 12. But yeah, technically in 2020, they played the Chiefs in the playoffs and they, you know, they had that, uh, yes, January regular season game. But that was the COVID year, right? And now, and I'm only saying that because they wouldn't allow us into the stadium. We had Mm -hmm. to, you know, do everything over Zoom. So anyway, I have not seen this young man play in a long time. I'm very excited to see him play whatever he has. You know, I'll put it like this and, and you know, I don't. This isn't a, a shot at anybody. And to the alleged, to the alleged victims, um, I, I'm. This is not a shot at you all. I'm not trying to belittle what you said. I'm not trying to say that what you said was wrong or what happened. I'm not saying that. I want to make sure I preface my statement by saying this. But every every Sunday, I watch some morally depraved men step onto the field and play football i i watch some 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 morally uh not so good people play the game as a person have i don't have any respect for them at all point blank period i don't have as a person especially the ones i know that I, I know personally are doing do, doing some very things that are immoral. I have no respect for them. When they step onto the field, I watch them play. I evaluate the way they play. As a fan, I watch. But as soon as that is done, I'm done. So whatever Deshaun Watson is to people off the field, hey, listen, I'm all for it. Let's have this conversation. I, 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 I am for it. We can, we can talk about it. But when he steps on the field, I'm not looking at Deshaun Watson – the person that has been accused multiple times of doing what he did. I'm not looking at Deshaun Watson, who wasn't convicted by two, what wasn't convicted by, I'm sorry, indicted, excuse me, by two grand juries. And even though, you know, that, that can go one way or go the other, I'm not looking at that. I am only looking to see what Deshaun Watson, who has not played football in a long period of time, how he looks, coming back for the Cleveland Browns, and when that game is over, then we can go back to having that conversation. Right. Uh, You know, I want to say that uh, if you run that video back, it's kind of sad what happened to lefties, right? I mean, (laughs) like, the moment the sun went downhill, unfortunately, so did lefties. I think their water stopped working, and I don't know. But uh, in terms of a player, man, one of the moments where I was like, yo, I think Houston finally got it right. I was on a cruise 2017. This is around the same time the Astros were in a World Series playing against the Dodgers. And if you've been on cruises, man, around this time of year, this is the the greatest time of year for sports, right? The fall sports era uh, time of year. Uh, Got the Dodgers and and, and the Astros playing, got NBA. But if you go on cruises, Guys link up that you never met at the bar at cruises, and you kind of got to get in where you fit in. If you don't get there early, you, you're probably going to be standing right. And the game against the Seattle Seahawks <laughs> that was the same week of the, of the uh MLB fi- finals, the, uh, the World Series, and uh, they lost that game just like they lost the Saints game, mainly due to defense, of course. But that game, Deshaun Watson was. Like everything and a little bit more, what you wanted him to come out as a rookie from Clemson. And I thought to myself, in a couple of years, there should be a new conversation about the perennial contenders, right? We look at how Miami mm-hmm. is now. You 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 would think that Miami is going to be a perennial contender. The uh the Bengals would would burrow. Uh, you know, I have my own feelings about the coach Staley and, and with the Chargers, but how we looked at what Herbert could possibly be for the Chargers. That is what I thought about the Houston Texans and what they should be at that point when he played in that game. Uh, special NFL player. In terms of off the field, a lot of that stuff I leave to off the camera. 
But overall, man, it's a travesty what happened to lefties because uh, <laughs> you said all that and just go back to lefties. Just go back to lefties. Look at that. Look at that video, man. Look at the shirt. Like they was ready. <laughs> lefties and Deshaun's gonna take over Houston, and then uh, now they both out of town. You had a sandwich there before? Uh, food? There? We tried. We were supposed to go to go. lunch, and, and one one day it started raining real bad. We was like, yeah. "Oh, we gonna go again." Yeah, then they, the yeah, last time we tried to go, it was like, "Yeah, we ain't gonna." It, it, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? huh? No, I was asking. Did they give free? Did they give free food out for the protest? What? I thank you for having me on. I appreciate <laughs> it. You can find me at Big Star Sports with the Z at the end <laughs> on uh, Twitter. Uh, you can follow my all my articles. At Texas Wire USA Today, my <laughs> government name is Brian Bearfield. And um, thank you guys for having me on. Tell them thank you, Miss Art. All right. <laughs> thank you for following us. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Locked On Texas podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter uh, at Locked On Texans. Uh, subscribe, comment, share to the YouTube page under the name Locked On Texans. As you see it on the screen, follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. And I definitely want to hear y'all top five love songs. Let's step away from football real quick. Let's talk music because it's kind of depressing for a lot of y'all right now. So let's, let's, let's have some type of happy feelings in the air. And it's going to get even more depressing come Sunday. Um, last time Deshaun Watson played a game, of course, for the Houston Texans, January 3rd, 2021. The man went 28 for 39, 365 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception in a loss against the Tennessee Titans. And I think, of course, one of the saddest moments in franchise history, seeing him walk out of NRG Stadium alongside J.J. Watt, <laughs> with Watt telling him, I'm sorry we wasted one of your years. Sunday is going to be, I just can't wrap my mind on the type of atmosphere that's going on. It's not going to be no daddy's home, especially with that song. Uh, But as always, Cody M. Davis, please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.